Research that we've been doing on brain sizes has fascinated us to the point of, well, overwhelmingness. Look how overwhelming step <laughs> is. Good. And what we discovered is that although human being brain size has probably been driven by sociality, much as it has for the other apes, birds, on the other hand, have a very different situation. Now, this is very interesting. Birds which form monogamous pairs and do not interact with the rest of their species. So, for example, let's take the Wahlberg's eagle. The Wahlberg's eagle, we know, forms a monogamous pair and doesn't live in a flock. So some birds will live in groups but still have a monogamous pair. I think the, the red-billed buffalo weaver would be a good example of that. But the Wahlberg's eagle doesn't do that, and nor do many crows. So they do form temporary flocks sometimes, but largely they just live on their own in their monogamous pair. And they have a bigger brain than the other birds that do live in flocks. So it's quite the opposite in the birds. And it would seem, therefore, that there is some kind of very complicated interaction going on in a monogamous pair of birds. And although they look simple from the outset or from the outside, inside there's obviously quite a lot of complicated interaction going on. And that has driven the larger brain size of monogamous birds. Isn't that fascinating? Well, I think that touches on something that we were talking about mm -hmm. a little bit earlier in terms of instinct. Are we instinct driven was a question that came through a little bit earlier. And I think the instinct to partner up is probably good here. I mean, if it's an indication of intelligence, why or intelligence, mm. why wouldn't it be uh, an instinctual drive for us to to want to partner up, I suppose? Um, James has a theory on that, but I think it's uh, it, it's all one in the same thing. I think really the urge to partner up and versus the reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now we're going to go to an advertisement break shortly, but we'll continue this discussion. Well, leading up to that and then afterwards. But safe to say that. Yes, I mean, we do have an urge to partner up, but there is a reason that we call a human being a nominally monogamous species. So in name, we're monogamous, but are we monogamous in praxis? This great mystery you will find out about after our short break. So don't go anywhere. We will talk about monogamy shortly. <laughs> Right, for those of you on the internet, of course, that's just the, uh, <laughs> that's our little practice, and thank you for bearing with us during those practices. Let's continue this discussion. Um, what I mean by that, okay, if we look at the chimpanzees and the gorillas, gorillas are not monogamous. They live in a harem situation where there's an enormous male with very small testicles. And proportionately, <laughs> a gorilla, I'm, not, I'm being serious, a gorilla has minute testicles, and at the other end of the scale, we have the bonobos, which are, well, they're like free-loving hippies, basically. Uh, they mate with each other, male or female, hither and yon, all over the place. And they have got enormous testicles, much larger than ours, for example. And we sit somewhere in between. So you have a situation where... You have gorillas who live in a very strict harem society where there's only one male who mates with the females and he completely dominates that right. No other male will be tolerated. Then you go across to the, uh, the other end of the spectrum with the bonobos where there is absolutely no pair bonding at all. It's everybody loving everybody else all the time. And you can predict the primate's sociality by the size of their testicles. Ours are somewhere in between there. <laughs> Which tells me that we are now being serious. Which tells me, or tells us, not just me, that we are nominally monogamous, <laughs> but that shenanigans do occur. Now, we know, of course, that shenanigans, humans are prone to shenanigans, both male and female. We are prone to shenanigans. And uh, so the amount of shenanigans in a species can be accurately predicted by the volume of their testicles. And that is all I have to say on the matter. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with Steph. This is biology. I, it's not supposed to be an amusing subject. Let's head across to Byron, shenanigans surround, find out what's going on at Chitra Dam. I'm going to pour a glass of cold water over Steph's head.